going to see two additional reactions that convert alcohols into alkyl halides. The first is the use of PBr3 and PCl3. The mechanism involves an SN2 reaction, hence you avoid rearrangements. And it gives you good yields with primary and secondary alcohols. Not for tertiary, because no tertiary SN2 reactions really are going to occur. So the reagents are PCl3, PBr3, or P slash I2, although we see PBr3 being used lots throughout the chapter. All right, let's look at the reaction. So again, saving you some time here writing stuff down. So we're going to react this alcohol with putting a lone pair on your phosphorus. So this guy's going to come around here, and do this. And then we will kick off bromide. And you'll have a plus charge right here. So we'll circle that guy, put a lone pair on just like that. And you still have a lone pair on your phosphorus. Um, now this guy right here is now going to be your leaving group. So then step two, you have bromide coming around attacking here, leaving group taken off, and you are left with your product, right? Plus PBR2OH, which can react two more times because it has two more bromo groups on it, right? So one of the things we see for multi-step synthesis is we take something like this with an alcohol on it, and we might, if we're just going down this way, we might write PBR3 here, and then that would make this little fellow. And then if you remember from our previous chapter, we can make a green yard out of that guy. Right? Mg, Br. And then we could carry out making new carbon-carbon bonds. So again, it's another tool that we're going to kind of put in the tool chest to remember for doing multi-step synthesis. Now, the last reaction here we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about it is the use of thionyl chloride. So it's a very effective way at making um, alkyl halides. So thionyl chloride structure written down below looks like this. Got a set of lone pairs on here. The chloro groups, of course your oxygen here. Now the idea is that you're taking this group right here, which is um, your OH, and you're going to convert that to a Cl group. Okay, so you're taking the alcohol here, you have some heat with thionyl chloride in there. Sometimes you'll see that written with a little triangle, if you recall. And then we'll, we'll make here your, your alkyl halide, SO2 gas, and hydrochloric acid. So the reaction's not reversible because, uh, practically speaking, because that SO2 right, bubbles out a solution and pulls the equilibrium to the right-hand side. So that's a, that's a favorable thing. So um, other thing to mention here too, little side note regarding this reaction. Um, this works well with primary, secondary, but I'll just say yields are low for tertiary, okay? Mostly because of steric. So let's talk about the mechanism here a little bit. So there's two parts to the mechanism. So let's take a look here at our part number one. So let's take an alcohol like this. Let's make it chiral just to make it fun. All right now to that we're going to add thionyl chloride. We got that guy on there. All right, put our long pair on here. So um, the sulfur is going to pull electron density in, 
and we're going to do something like this. And we're going to come up, pop that double bonded oxygen with a lone pair up on the oxygen here. So that's going to look something like this. So there's your oxygen. I'm going to swing around that hydrogen there. And now we're bond to sulfur. And then that double bonded oxygen is where we're going to get the lone pair. All right, so we get this guy. Now, the next step is we're going to kick off one of these chloro groups. So kick off chloride here. Now, when you do that, you're going to get one, two, three, four oxygen, H, sulfur, double bond, chloro, lone pair, all that stuff on there. It's a cleanup phase, right? So the first step that we see there is just attack of oxygen to sulfur. And then the next couple steps are the cleanup phase. And now we're going to go through and we're going to clean up the H there. And your book uses chloride to do this. So sometimes um, pyridine is used. Now what that's going to give us here is our oxygen with our sulfur, double bonded, and our chloro group here. And your lone pairs like that. Now, it's interesting that the second step here is actually somewhat surprising. And it's a little bit variable depending on where you guys go in chemistry. So notice here that up at the top, I've skipped over this little book, but it says the mechanism goes with retention of configuration. So that's what we're going to do in our book, because our book does that. We're going to follow that for Chem 220. If you go on a chem, or if you look elsewhere, you might find that you see inversion here. Um, it turns out that it's kind of solvent dependent. So it depends what you're using for your solvent among some other things. But we don't want to overcomplicate it. We're just going to stick with what the book goes with, which is retention. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. So let's put our um, reactant down here. Our oxygen with our sulfur, the bond in our CL here. And then I want to put a wedge on here. So take a second. You guys catch up. Let's make that a, an H atom. That's what it is, right? So this step happens um, very quickly. Okay. And what's going to happen is the nucleophile, which is going to be chlorine is going to be delivered at the same time as the leaving group leaves. So let's just make a note on here. The nucleophile right, is delivered by or our leaving group. So anything that, that causes sterics, it's, it's, like, it's like an exchange, right? Anything that crowds around that carbon slows this thing down a little bit. So that's why if it's primary, it works better. Secondary, good. Tertiary, just a little bit slower. Now what happens is this. is This, this kind of just takes off. So it leaves. But now remember, this is a step that happens very quickly. So it's a very fast step. Right. And what you're going to get is this weird looking structure here. And I'm going to draw this out. I want to keep my H out here on a wedge like this. And then, and then in essence, because it's very fast, that atom doesn't have a chance to necessarily rehybridize and become sp2. It stays sp3, which means, and it's going to look weird here, but it means at the end of this thing, you, you kind of have a lobe here that's pointing back, and that lobe has a positive charge on it. Okay, it's, it's not at the end of the lobe, it's just a positively charged lobe. And then over here on the side then, because our leaving group left, you would have oxygen with a negative charge, sulfur, and chlorine. And again, these things are, they're called contact ion pairs. So they're still touching each other right there. 
And then what happens is you see an electron flow where we do this. And then that guy comes directly over, and that's very, very fast. So that, and again, in our book, what we go with is we say that, hey, this thing actually comes around just like so, and it puts a chloro group right there. All right, and then of course, plus SO2. And remember that we use this arrow up to denote gas sometimes, right, gas. So for us, the key thing to note here is that we are going to see retention of configuration. What that means is that our O, SO, um, CL group is going to end up just getting interchanged with the CL group here, right? So your OH on a dash, chloro on a dash. All right, and remember um, that SO2 leaving this is one of the reasons why this is not really a, uh, a reversible reaction in any sense because it's just bubbling off, it's pulling the equilibrium to form more of this final product here. All right, so let's take a look at um, some of the summary statements that we just saw in the last few pages. So we saw with HBr or HI, you get a SN2, right? If it's primary, an SN1 if it's tertiary, and a mixture right if it's secondary. This guy over here, remember, is your Lucas. So Lucas wants to proceed by SN1 largely. That's the faster. That's why primary is not going to work, primary alcohols, right? PBR3, SN2, so we see nothing really happening at the tertiary. And the thionyl chloride, it's not really an SN2 or SN1. It's We go with retention. And we just say that for tertiary that it's poor yields, um, basically because of sterics, essentially. All right, so 